Tonight on Texas News Channel, UT engineers develop a new COVID test machine. Students complain about paying for to-go meals in residence halls. And Austin approves climate equity. You're watching Texas News Channel, your leader for live local UT coverage. Your campus, your news. Texas News Channel. Good evening and welcome to Texas News Channel. For Monday, October 11th, I'm Alexa Sherry. And I'm Maggie Walansky. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. A team of engineers at UT have developed a prototype of a portable rapid COVID testing machine. The device has the potential to improve testing in areas that lack adequate testing. The device has been under development since 2007 with the goal of detecting cancers and other illnesses. However, the device was adapted to detect COVID-19 in response to the pandemic. While the prototype has shown success, the team is still looking for investors to fully de to develop the machine. UT students are frustrated with their recently returned Eco2Go program after a short hiatus. The reusable boxes are returning to dining halls, leaving many students upset. They argue that the new meal plan interferes with COVID guidelines and makes it unreliable and difficult for students to dine safely. TNC spoke to first-year students Epic Lucas to see how this change has been hard for her. Last Thursday, students and other Austin residents gathered outside the City Hall to celebrate the Council's approval of the Austin Equity Plan. The plan seeks to overturn environmental policies that have been said to disproportionately affect marginalized communities. The plan includes a goal to reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2040. The plan also intends to create green jobs as well as entrepreneurship opportunities geared towards disadvantaged communities. UT environmentalist organizations look forward to contributing to a more sustainable planet for the next generations. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals has temporarily allowed SB 8, Texas controversial law limiting abortions. This ruling comes after a federal judge ordered temporary block of the law. The Fifth Circuit will make their ruling after the court receives arguments from both sides. Whatever the court decides, it would only decide whether the law could remain while the proceedings continue. Last Wednesday, the Austin Police Department named their first Asian American woman commander. Eve Stevens starts her career as an APD officer and from there moved up the ranks. Steven hopes her career path will inspire other Asian American and women she knows. It's called a challenging time for officers around the country. The Austin Police Department is conducting an investigation after a deadly police shooting in downtown Austin occurred Saturday morning around 1 o'clock in the morning. The shooting happened around 6 in Sabine Street. Witnesses say that there were two groups of men fighting before the shooting initiated. A 17-year-old male was injured and taken to the hospital where he later died. Two individuals were detained and a handgun was retrieved. Police Chief Joseph Chacken argues that Austin residents should keep guns out of the entertainment district. Continue to tell people uh, if you're coming downtown, uh, you know, please enjoy the entertainment district, please enjoy it safely, and please don't bring a firearm. This is the sixth shooting that police have been involved in this year. The Texas Senate approved a map Friday that would reduce the number of districts in which black and Hispanic residents make up the majority of eligible voters. The map hinders the potential for Democrats to close the gap between the two parties in Texas. Congregational delegation by drawing fewer districts in which voters of color who tend to lean Democratic make up the majority of eligible voters based on eligible voter population. The state currently has 22 districts with white majorities, eight with Hispanic majorities, one with a black majority, and none that have no majorities. The congressional map now moves to Texas House for approval before it can be signed by Governor Greg Abbott. 
Although many were concerned about ACL's lax COVID rule enforcement, there were only four reported COVID cases traced back to the exposure at ACL. However, 33 people were arrested for DWIs at the festival. Some charges included felony DWIs for having two or more prior convictions or DWI with a child passenger. 80% of the 911 calls from festival goers resulted in DWIs, with 15 calls being for crashes. Please stay safe, Austin. CEO of Tesla, Elon Musk, made an announcement on Thursday that Tesla will be moving its headquarters to Austin. It's currently working with G GG Factory. Tesla will produce the Model Y electric SUVs and Cybertruck. This will be expected to be in production at the end of the year. Tesla is looking to employ thousands of people with annual wages starting at 35000 In other news, in a report, Texas climatologist John Nielsen Gammon, it appears that the temperatures in Texas may be rising at an alarming rate. As the temperature rises, the state's water supply is at high risk. High temperatures can cause devastating droughts, such as the 2011 drought, which hurt the state financially and has recently been found to have been more severe and widespread throughout the state than previously expected. After several years of service to the UT and Austin community, the food trucks behind the university co-op are being forced to relocate by the end of October. This news comes as a shock to the business owners and who received this news at the end of September, giving them about a month to find a new location. The co-op says they need the space for their employees due to the lack of parking availability. Food truck owners are struggling to find a place to move and students are upset about the sudden news. The Texas OU game was not the only major event happening in Dallas this past weekend. It also was the State Fair. A cowboy puppet by the name Shorty McCoy stole the hearts of children attending the fair. The talented puppeteer of 17-inch tall Shorty is Will Schutz, who makes the marinette dance. He says that the amazingness comes with a lot of well-produced content he sees on TV. Several of this can be found by simply watching Magic of a Dancing Puppet at the State Fair. Coming up on Texas News Channel, Sophia Kurz will be bringing you up to date on the world of business. So stay tuned and we will catch you after the break. Your campus, your news. Texas News Channel. Hello and welcome back. I'm Sophia Kurtz with your business update. In today's market, we have NASDAQ down by roughly 0.64%, S&P 500 down by 0.69%, the Dow down by 0.72%, Bitcoin down by 0.54%, and VIX up by 6.55%. The market has seen better days. Most stocks are struggling to gain traction in an upward direction. A lot of this decline has to do with the current difficulties in passing a bill to raise the debt ceiling in the government. The U.S. is very close to reaching the max amount it can borrow to make government transactions. In having Democratic leadership in office currently, there is more responsibility on the Democrats to figure, out, figure it out or else the blame of the U.S. economy failing will be put on them. Republicans from the GOP know this very well and is using it as leverage to gain terms of their liking. The Democrats have brought some time, bought some time, however, as Senate recently passed a bill that would increase the debt ceiling by $480 billion. That may seem like a lot, but it really is not, as that increase would be good enough for the country not to default until at least December 3rd this year. The pressure is on for the Democrats to figure out how to pass a bill that would garner support from the Republicans, effectively raising the debt ceiling to avoid the potential catastrophe of the U.S. heading into a recession. Tesla's headquarters making its way to Austin is not the only news we have for you today. Along with the expansion of the company's factories comes with the expansion of housing prices around Tesla's selected location. According to data from Redfin, a real estate brokerage, zip code 78725, has already undergone a 44.7% 44 
percent increase since last year, with the chief economist expecting prices to continue rising. Residents are conflicted due to being concerned about this new housing issue, but excited for Tesla's arrival. Southwest Airlines canceled many flights out of Austin over the weekend for a total of 1,800 countrywide affecting many ACL goers looking to fly back home. The cancellation of 27% of Southwest's flights are due to air traffic control issues and bad weather. However, according to KXAN, other airlines have not been experiencing similar problems. Thousands of workers across the country have gone on strike in recent weeks. About 1,400 workers walked off the job at Kellogg cereal plants along across the U.S. Kellogg cereal makes many popular cereals like Frosted Flakes and Fruit Loops. 2,000 nurses and employees at a hospital in Buffalo, New York, also began a strike last week. A number of strikes have, been rec have recently been authorized. These include the union representing 150,000 film, TV, and live theater workers across the U.S. and Canada, and the union representing thousands of John Deere factory workers. While a strike authorization permits a strike, one may not, ha not happen if negotiations are successful. And that's your business update. I'm Sophia Kurtz reporting live from the Business Center. Now over to Amaya Austin for weather. All right, Longhorns, will the week continue to be like today or are we going to start seeing some thunderstorms? And where is our fall weather? I'll give you all the details when we get back. Stay tuned. Your campus, your news. Texas News Channel. Welcome back to Texas News Channel and happy Monday. We hope your week started off as good as the weather did today, but don't put that umbrella away just yet. Tonight looks great with a low around 71, but Tuesday we are expecting a 30% chance of thunderstorms with a high near 90. Wednesday we're looking at 70% chance of rain that afternoon with temperatures in the high 80s. Thursday skies will begin to clear up by noon, leaving us with a high of 86, and this Friday you can expect that rain to completely wrap up and leave us with mostly sunny skies and a high around 84. We'll end off this beautiful weekend where we'll also start to see some low temperatures and some proper fall weather. So get your sweaty sweaters ready, Longhorns. Fall is coming soon. That's it for me live from the Weather Center. I'm Amaya Austin. Thanks, Amaya. And now looking at UT Sports, joining us tonight is Tommy Yarish. Welcome, Tommy. It's great to have you on. Great to be here. Thank you. This past Saturday was the day that every Texas fan looks forward to during football season, Red River Week. However, a perfect start turned into a nightmare for the Longhorns. Let's head to the Cotton Bowl for the highlights. Starting off, freshman Xavier Ward that you see on your screen there. That's the first play of the game, folks. 75-yard touchdown to put Texas up 7-0 early. Not too much longer. The Heisman candidate, B. John Robinson, a two-yard touchdown. 14-0 Texas, but this Oklahoma offense can get going fast. That's Spencer Rattler diving into the end zone making it 14 to 7. To start off the second quarter, true freshman Caleb Williams comes in at quarterback and on his first play goes for a 66-yard touchdown run. That makes it 28 to 14. Texas still ahead, but not they'll get the ball back quick enough. Spencer Rattler back in the game, but he fumbles the ball. That would be the last play Rattler plays in this game. Texas falls on it. They still up 28 to 17. Same possession. B. John Robinson just watch him work, breaking tackles left and right, and when he's in open field, he is hard to take down. You thought you were going to tackle him? Nope, onto the ground you go. That's a 50-yard run to set up. This next play, Casey Thompson looking over the middle, and he's got a man. That's Jared Wiley for a two-yard touchdown pass, 35-17 to 17 Texas. But how about this play? Caleb Williams stepping up with pressure. Marvin Mims is down there somewhere, and he makes the catch of the year. That's a 52-yard touchdown pass. A two-point conversion comes to tie that one up. And then Kennedy Brooks takes a direct snap, 18 yards to the house. That's Oklahoma's first lead of the game after being down by 21. But Texas will answer. Casey Thompson, who else? The freshman, Xavier Worthy, with a huge catch. That ties it up at 48, but with 10 seconds left in the game. Kennedy Brooks 
breaking tackles left and right, and he is gone for a 33-yard touchdown run in the final seconds. That wins it for Oklahoma, 55-48. to Let's take a look at the stats. Casey Thompson, 20 for 34, 388 yards and five touchdowns. Five touchdowns ties the record for the most throwing touchdowns a quarterback has had in the Red River game. Bijan Robinson getting it done on the ground once again, 137 yards and a touchdown. And the freshman Xavier Worthy with 261 yards off of nine receptions and a pair of touchdowns as well. For Oklahoma, the true freshman quarterback stepping up when they needed him most, 212 yards and two touchdowns. And then Kennedy Brooks, after what has been a slow running game start this season for Oklahoma, 25 carries for 217 yards and two touchdowns as well. And then the incredible Marvin Mims, five receptions for 136 yards and two touchdowns as well. Texas moves on to take on Oklahoma State this Saturday at home, and Oklahoma heads back home to face off against TCU. Wow, Tommy, Texas blew a 21 lead in this game. It, it was in the bag. What, what contributed to this collapse? Yeah, well, by far one of the main portions of this collapse was the lack of tackling. Like I mentioned earlier, Oklahoma's running game was essentially non-existent coming into this game, but Texas defenders not being able to wrap up in the backfield or on short gains led to Kennedy Brooks having those 217 yards and a touchdown, a lot of those yards coming after being contacted. But another key point that Texas needs to focus on heading into these last six regular season games is the offensive line. They've had a roller coaster season. They look sharp against Texas Tech, but have not been looking like that as of late. Bijan Robinson had only 36 yards in the second half against Oklahoma, and 33 of those came on one play. If Texas wants to finish games, he'll need to have two strong halves instead of one as a Heisman candidate, and that starts with the protection up front. Just such an unfortunate loss for the Longhorns, Tommy. Uh, let's turn to baseball t tomorrow. The White Sox host the Astros in a huge game. Four, how can they tie it up and force game five, you think? You know, they just need to continue playing the way that they have been all year, making contact and getting hits that will bring in runners consistently like they did in game three coming back from behind. They've got one of the most consistent hitters in baseball in Tim Anderson, who's played well all season long, and a reliable power hitter in Jose Abreu. They'll need to be sharp as well on the pitching end as they struggled so far throughout the series, especially on the road. It's tough to play in Houston and come away with a win, but they're going to have to hone in on that defensive side of the ball if they want to win game four and go back to Houston for a potential win or go home game. But like I said, they've got to big, pick up that big game four win in Chicago. Right. Well, thanks so much for coming on, Tommy. It's always a pleasure. Up next is entertainment with Edley Termillion. We'll catch you after the break, so stay tuned. Your campus, your news. Texas News Channel. Welcome back to Texas News Channel. I'm Edley Tamillion. Texas native Megan Thee Stallion has followed into Billie Eilish's footstep, using her set at ACL to vent her anger towards the state abortion law. Not only did Thee Stallion speak on the matters on stage, but she took later to her Instagram writing, politicians want to cut off abortion access and control our bodies, lives, and futures. I'm speaking up, and she concluded her post with the hashtag, ban off our bodies, and texted a code to take action. This past Saturday, Kim Kardashian West hosted Saturday Night Live. According to the public, knocked it out the water. In her opening monologue, she made jokes based on her real-life experience, including meeting O.J. Simpson, who was infamously trialed for the murder of his ex-wife, her sex tape, and her off-again, on-again husband, Kanye West. As for her acting skills um, in the set skits, not a bad word to be said. She poked fun at her sisters and drew an inspiration her, from her own life. Could we be seeing a... Uh, Oscar nomination from Kim in the near future. Timothy Chalamet released a sneak peek of his character Willy Wonka to the upcoming prequel of Willy Wonka this past Sunday. Chalamet posts a, a feature of him in the classic Willy Wonka attire, consisting scene of a brown hat, a purple velvet coat. The upcoming prequel will be portrayed Wonka's life before the Chocolate Factory. The movie is beginning is. Be is beginning to direct by the director of Padding, Paul King, and the, and the movie is set to be released in March 2023. Word on the street is our favorite Disney alumni. Selena Gomez has a new boo, and it's no, no other than Chris, Ev uh, Chris Evans himself. Y yep, you heard right. 
Gomez is rumored, is rumored to be dating Avengers Chris Evans six, six years ago back in 20, 2015. Gomez admitted to crushing on Evans. And now the paparazzi has spotted them leaving the same restaurant, and fans are noticing that Evans follow her, her on Instagram. Do you think this, the rumors are true? A wizard and a superhero sounds like a power couple to me. That's it from me with your entertainment news. I'm Edley Tamilia. Now back to you. Thanks, Edley. And as always, we thank you for tuning in. You can follow us on Twitter and be sure to check out our new Instagram profile at Texas News Channel. If you have a news tip, you can reach out to us on all of our social media sites or email us at tnctstv at gmail.com. I'm Maggie Walansky. And I'm Alexa Sherry. From all of us at TNC, good night and we'll see you next week.